Welcome to the MIT Leadership Center video series. Uh, it's my pleasure today uh, to be speaking with Peter Senge, who is a senior lecturer here at MIT Sloan, also founder of the Society for Organizational Learning, and recently part of a group that formed the Academy for Systemic Change. So welcome. Thank welcome, you, Deborah. Peter. I thought we might start, actually, with learning a little bit more about you, the person. Do you have any sense of what sparked that interest in systems? I grew up in Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, if that's not yes. sel a self-evident <laughs> answer. Uh, I'll never forget as a kid, when we first lived in the San Fernando Valley of Los Angeles, sitting in the back of my folks' car, going through miles and miles of orange groves and lemon groves. And it, it's hard to imagine it today, by the time I went to college, a very short time, you know, a decade later, by the time I went to college, they were all gone, just gone. Shopping malls and developments. Mm -hmm. They would have these warnings. Kids had to all come off the streets. The air was so bad. Um, and it, that was a 10-year process to, to create this incredible, out-of-control uh, development, destroy an incredible, beautiful, natural habitat, and make a place that was really, by anybody's measure, a much less desirable place to live. Um, so living through that, uh, it kind of crystallized one question. It was very clear that nobody was in control. Absolutely nobody, because no one would have advocated for that. There was no planning. Whatever there was, it was obviously very minimal. It was a big development free-for-all. And it made me aware that the kind of system had a control of its own. That process was in control of itself. Okay, I'm going to fast forward us a little bit. Um... And in that fast forward, um, you have written many, many books. You've worked with businesses, with governments, with schools, um, with all kinds of organizations, um, and had a lot to say. Your work has been very, very influential uh, in, the, in the world at large. And I guess I would say of all of that work, this is not an easy thing to do, if you were to say, what are the I don't know, three or four core ideas that you think are most important in the work that you've done, what would those be? Well, probably since I was telling you the story about my kind of youth and how I kind of came to this, I would say that idea that, hey, nobody's in charge, mm -hmm. the systems are in control of themselves, is still really a core idea. You could say, hey, who, who wakes up in the morning and wants to produce destabilizing climate? who wants to produce poverty, who wants to produce all the, these deep systemic problems we see in the world, and the answer is nobody. Yet, who is producing it? All of us. So that idea, that gap between, you might say, our, our aspirations and our agency is a, is, a, is a fundamental kind of problem. I think it's almost like the problem in the world. Um, so that's always sat at the center of things. Then I started to, to pick up a lot of, I would say, finer points of practical systems thinking or practical systemic change. And that's when the whole five disciplines framework gradually came together. It was very clear that people who made real headway were really good at building a shared vision. So that's the first okay. idea is that the system takes over. The second is the notion of visioning. Yeah. And really what you're talking about is collective visioning. It is not the individual, uh, here I am and I want to, it, it's about uh, something for the greater good, if I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth, right. but, but people coming together to sort right. of say, where do we want to be in the future? And that's a yes. critical idea. Um, exactly, and absolutely. So what then? Well, then I'd say, you know, you could kind of put those two together with a third idea that, you know, the processes, you know, the how, you might say, of real systemic change. Um, I think they're actually fairly mysterious in a way. Um, I mean, we have all kinds of models in organization literature of plan change. And so much of the leadership literature in the mainstream in organization literature, as you know better than any of us, is vision articulated by one or a small number of people, makes a plan, how do you enroll people, develop a strategy, how do you get people to move towards your vision? And, you know, I have no doubt that that works perfectly fine in some circumstances. But I think it's wholly and completely inadequate when you deal with the deep systemic issues. I mean, nobody's going to save our butts on climate change. We're going to have to save our butts on climate change. So you take any of the deep 
systemic issues and you start to realize that it's always going to be about leadership of many and in many different forms from many different places. And then what do you do to get this system which you have a vision and you've got people kind of up and ready to go, um, then, then what's that next step? I think there, there is a kind of a growing sense of connectedness that then has to start to develop. What I mean by connectedness here is we're not alone. I'm not alone. We used to have one of our cartoons we used to often use for systems thinking. Uh, two guys standing in one end of a boat and the boat's tipped like this because the other end of the boat is sinking. And the two guys look at each other and go, and I think it's not trivial that it's two guys. I'm really glad the, the hole is in their end of the boat. <laughs> That's kind of the mindset. Right, right. I'm okay. That's okay. No. It's whether we're okay. So you know, it doesn't matter what end of the boat Sense of That's, interdependence yes. and in the change process itself. And action on multiple fronts. We got to work um, on the whole in their end of the boat. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of mindset. And, and, and I, I think you could call that a very enlightened mindset. I think it is, but it's also very practical. I mean, that's why the boat cartoon was always so effective. <laughs> People got it, you know, those two guys, they can feel great. I remember years ago, I was listening to a bunch of New Yorkers say, ah, well, the sea level goes up, you know, five, 10 meters. We'll just build a wall around Manhattan. They were looking at their end of the boat, you know? So, and really thinking you know, that that's the mindset you get into, you know, that, you know, we'll just protect me and ours. Um, and sooner or later that, that really has to shift. <laughs>